did think that I had an idea of quite where I was going, but actually I don't. Okay, so do you have some questions for me today to help you out? I'm just going through your workbook three before to see what, just refresh my memory on what you were focused on and what you were kind of planning on doing. So what's changed? Do you know, when I read the workbook, I think that's very inspiring. I'd work with that coach. <laughs> yes. But it doesn't, it, it, and even though it, it is me, it doesn't somehow feel... I started, I got a bit hung up on what to call myself in a way, as in what my niche was, as in was I, I, I thought I was an alignment coach and then I thought that's not really it and then I thought well is it personal development yeah and I thought well it is but if it's if if there's still this focus more on shamanism as well and bringing in healing it's not just that mm. and I didn't want to call myself a wellness coach because I thought that's too health orientated and it's much more than that or, or, yeah. or a different aspect and in the end I got so kind of confused with myself that I thought I don't actually know what I'm offering anymore. Does that make sense? Well, yes, it does. It does. And look, it, sometimes it happens to the, the, the people who thought they absolutely had it clear in their mind and then they sort of think, oh, hang on a minute, I don't know. And that's okay because your niche is going to be evolving just like you will continue to evolve in your own personal growth. So it's okay if you choose something now and it doesn't resonate and you decide that you're going to switch it or move in a different direction. That's, that's perfectly okay. But something else to keep in mind is that if you have two, two major kind of focuses that you use, maybe it's modalities or interests or ways of working with people that you kind of, that that's kind of the struggle point of how do I blend it to really, to really show people or tell people what I do because it's so hard to explain how these two work or how they work together, then it's okay to have two branches of services. It's okay to say, okay, over in here, I do my energy work or my healing. And over here, I do my, my transition work or my transformation work or my personal development work. And, and if one takes some of the modalities of the other and combines them while you're working with a client, wonderful. But if it doesn't, it doesn't matter because you've advertised there's two particular ways that you will work or you can work with people. Does, does that help if you were to maybe separate a couple of the things that kind of just don't gel and that's what's causing the confusion? Yes, it does, because I have been trying to kind of fix it, fit it together in a way that I'm going to understand how I'm going to work. And of course, I don't because I haven't done it yet, Yeah. firstly. <laughs> yeah. So yes, that does make sense. Okay. Because I don't know what it's going to look like. And that's okay. That, that's actually something that you may not know until you've worked with a few clients and you've figured, figured it out in practice. So it might actually take a couple of months working with clients to really feel into how is this going to work? What sort of seems to come up when I'm working with my clients? And that will depend on the types of clients that you attract. Because after you work with them for a period of time, you start to see those patterns and you start to understand the underlying beliefs and the exercises or the insights that seem to help the most. And you start to understand which practices really support them that you, you then become a lot more familiar and even more confident in knowing how a session will look and what sometimes will be included and what sometimes may not be. So that can really be developed by working with people, just working with them and seeing what comes up frequently for the types of people that you want to work with to let that idea start to form and clarify so you've got a much clearer picture. Sometimes you can't get that, that down and, and really clear in your mind until you're actually doing it. And by doing, you're starting to feel and vision how it can be done. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, no, I do. Because when I started this, it was because I work with kinesiology and, and shamanic healing, but 
but a lot of my clients think a one-off session is going to change the world and yeah. then they feel better for a little while and then they don't and they think oh this isn't working so part of doing this was to to create a whole path really something more to, so that there was a journey from a to the end wherever that was but as i've done it I, I felt less and less like I want to do what I've been doing. And that's part of the problem because I think I don't want to do what I've been doing. I want to do something else. And now I can't. Okay. So yes, that does make sense. It helps. I, I kind of just think, okay, just let's see what. Bring, these, this is what I do. Let's see what happens and how it. It takes some pressure off of thinking, oh, I've got to know what I'm doing. No, you don't have to because you're you're the one running the show. It's your business. It's how you want to work with people. And you're not going to, if, if you're not really feeling it and you're not working in the way that you want to be working with people, it's not going to help your clients have the best experience. So it's really your decision as to how you want to work with people allowing them to understand it's a process that's the thing with kinesiology you you're working with the energy of the body and the energy of the body is created because of the thoughts and the beliefs that are patterned into the body and so when you clear the energy it doesn't necessarily mean that you've cleared the belief or the pattern of behavior that's something that you have to work with them with holistic coaching mind body practitioning so yeah even educating your your previous clients and maybe even just focusing on how you want to be working with people now. If people come and say, I, I want to have a kinesiology balance or I want, to, I want to have an energy session, you can say to them, I can do that for you. However, I've recently acquired a new modality that really works with the whole person, mind and body and emotions because I can do a balance for you. But unless I actually help you uncover the pattern of thinking and behaving that's causing this disruption in your energy balance, then you're going to feel great for a little while, but then you may revert back to old behaviors because the belief system hasn't changed. And that's what I can help you do so that you can permanently feel better. Then if you, if you explain it to them in a way similar to that and you say, so I can work with you now for about six sessions so that we can get this sorted, then you know, then you're giving them the option. It's, it's not forcing them. You're not trying to sell them. You're just explaining to them. I've, I've recently acquired a new modality that can help get you more permanent results. You know, it just takes a few more sessions because you're going to actively be involved in it, not just let me do it and think everything's fine now. She's balanced me. They have yeah. to take responsibility in their part of what they want to create. So how do you feel about sort of just shifting the focus and, and if someone comes and says, I want to do what you have been doing, you can say, I can do that. However, explain to them why you have or why you've shifted focus and why you're now working. Even, even, do, even for the first person that asks you and you haven't taken a client just doing that yet, you can say, now I'm working with people in a more holistic, um, full-bodied, mind-body way because this is going to get you better results by empowering you to realise you have the opportunity to change some of these things permanently and not just come here for me to do an energy and then think it's okay for a while and then come back. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's good. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so I've been get I've just been caught up in thinking too much about it really and not going anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Look, that happens, especially at the moment when you're stuck <laughs> at home, it's more time to let the monkey mind have a little chit chat. Yeah. Yeah. There, there was something else I just wanted to ask. So yeah. when I was doing practices, I worked with six people, I think. Yeah. So working with people on the course is quite easy, really, compared to working with others, I yeah. found. Yes. Because they know, they, they've already got an understanding of the process. They know they've chosen to work with you because there's something they want to work with, da, 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 da. Mm. And it just, it just felt much clearer. So I'm really glad I worked with people who weren't. Good. But boy, it was hard. Especially with, with one particular person. Now, I did work with, for, I think, four times just because I thought, I'm going to persevere here. Yeah. <laughs> but in the end, I thought, actually, this is somebody that if I did work with them, I'd say, I'm not working with you anymore because they didn't do anything I suggested. Mm. And, and 
and I just thought how how when you're really working there and offering it out to the public, who what, whoever you attract, you know, do you still attract the people that really it's just like pulling blinking teeth and they just actually don't really want to do it? No, I think this is why I do suggest doing a mix. If it's really scary in the beginning, it's good and helpful to swap sessions with fellow practitioners because at least then you're taking that leap through your fear and you're experiencing some coaching until you feel confident enough to then go out and offer some coaching to people who aren't doing the course. Because yes, you do have to work a little harder coaching. The, the only concern sometimes is that the people who put their hand up and say, yes, I'll have a free coaching session, they don't necessarily have anything particularly that they'd like to change. And more to the point, they're not always committed to making that change. They're just more curious about what are you doing? What is this coaching thing? Let me see what I can learn for free. So unfortunately, that sometimes can happen when anybody offers anything for free. It's often the curiosity that brings them there instead of the real desire. So the difference between those kinds of practice clients and paying clients is that the paying client is actually investing money and time and energy because they want it. And that is the main difference. But the practice is so necessary. Let me put this to you, Julie. If you had have tackled that client, that client, that practice client who's not doing the course and has no idea about any of this stuff, which stretches you to really educate and teach them, do you think it would have been harder or easier to work with that practice client if you hadn't already had some sessions with fellow students? Harder. Mm. because working with the fellow students actually gave you with me the confidence to think actually there is a, you can see a process within you know within an hour I can see something has un, un, shown up to be seen and there is a process and they have got something from this as well and there was you know um, so it gave yeah it gave me the confidence to think actually this this is all right this does work mm. this process Whereas if I'd have just worked with other the others that I'm particularly thinking about that really were just slucking their doors. Um, oh my goodness. Then it would not have, I, th I think it would have been quite um, demoralizing really. I don't think, and and they, I mean, they were, they, I actually know them quite well enough, this particular one, to say, actually, do you know what? I wouldn't work with you because you've done nothing I've suggested you do. Mm. And I did actually, in the end, ask her the question. I said, look, I'm going to ask you a question. You know, do you want change? And she said, yeah, 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 I do. So I said, yeah, but do you want to change? Ah, <laughs> no. yes. You know? And I said, that's the problem. <laughs> but she me, actually, did, did she actually say no? to the do you want to change yeah okay so maybe that's hey maybe to qualify every pain client you should ask them that from the beginning on your on your discovery call or your 15 minute chat with them to decide whether or not you want to work with them because you know they're ready or they're the right type of person for you maybe that's actually a, a really beneficial experience they're learning so that that's a qualifying question for you to ask do you want change? Yeah. Of course, everybody wants change, but it's, are they willing to change? And that's the thing. In order for you to really have that most beneficial coaching partnership with your clients so they can get the outcome they want, the change they want, they have to be willing to do some things differently. They have to be willing to be open-minded. They have to be willing to take action with your support, guidance, education, etc but they have to be the ones to do the changing. Mm, yeah, and that was, that was the bit that, um, yeah, <laughs> became a bit of an issue. <laughs> but it, yeah, so it was an interesting experience, all of it was, yeah. And I thoroughly enjoyed the course. I think it is a very good course. Thank you. It's very well, you know, um planned out and great information thank you thank you i'm glad you enjoyed it so now now how do you feel about moving forward now you're graduated 
you've, you've already you've already got a business established don't you well i did have but at the beginning of this year interestingly you see it's a funny year isn't it it is it is a funny year and funny stuff is occurring so um yeah i've worked for many years as a kinesiologist mainly and the shamanic um thing is is more of an, an interest in a, a kind of path i've taken but it i weave it in sometimes but but at the beginning of this year, I just felt so strong that I, you know, I just don't want to do this. I just don't want to do this anymore, which is really odd. Because so I actually at the beginning of the year decided to take um, time off, and in that time off, I thought I really don't want to do this anymore. And if I'm and with the life coaching and everything else, I thought I'm going to rebrand anyway. So I closed my business. I just thought, do you know what? I've got to close everything and say I'm not doing this to see what I do want to do. Mm. So that's partly the space I'm in. That has, that's kind of, of finished. I mean, I have got long-term clients who have contacted me and have sort of, I haven't done sessions, I've chatted and kind of utilized whatever shows up and I've sort of suggested things, but I felt really strongly like, I just don't want to do this now. I, something new is showing up, which this is a part of. Yeah. So it, it, it kind of feels for me like I want to really start from a different place, not from where I was or having had a business. Okay. I think this is completely new. So I changed the name and I did get the domain name in um, Spirit of Change because I just felt mm. that seemed to fit everything I did, mm. if I do it. <laughs> um, and yeah, and so now it is just, okay, how is this fitting together? How do I want to go forward? Do I even want to go forward? I mean, right now, it's, it's, a, it's such an unreal kind of space to be in, in yeah. lockdown, if you like, or retreat. Um, it's, it's, it's just an interesting time. So I'm kind of really evaluating it all, thinking, how do I want... I mean, yes, it has helped think, yeah, I don't have to put this together. I can just say, this is what I do, all these different things. And it, um, but yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I'm a bloody <laughs> crap coaching client. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> not at all, not at all. Have you actually inquired into what that, what that feeling is? That, is it, is it resistance? Is it fear? Is it? overwhelm exhaustion tiredness ready for something new new variety what is it either that you feel is blocking you from knowing or figuring that out or that is is needing to be recognized the need which one would you say it is i think So I am somebody that generally knows instinctually, okay, this is done. But there is that, I'm not sure whether instinctually, I just think actually this is done and there's a new path to follow and we'll see what just shows up. But, I, but there's also this fear that comes up and, um, And also, do you know, I think it, so working as, as a kinesiologist and, and I've always said, oh, it's a paying hobby because it's never supported me financially. Okay. It's never been busy, but I work from home. You know, I, I don't, I've got, I had a website, but I, you know, I don't promote myself as such. So I've been quite, I, in a way it's been a bit under the radar away but it's still hard work <laughs> yeah so i don't know and this is this is it i do recognize there is a fear thing that comes up and i don't and it kind of i just think do you know what i could put more effort in this and it could be just the same more effort than actually reward if that makes sense mm. So what are you going to lose if you go back to working? What will you lose that you're not quite sure you want to give up? A 
a purpose really and that sense of giving something back and doing something worthwhile because my my really if i if i don't do the, what i'm with is if i don't do this anymore and i don't work with people and i offer nothing mm. what am i going to do <laughs> yep and let's flip that julie if you were to go back into a business and put the time and the energy in and you know, allow the reward, whether it's financial or otherwise, to come in and support you. What is there any fear about what you might lose if you were to work again or in a different way to last time? No. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's interesting, isn't it? So you'd actually be gaining something. You'd be gaining the purpose that you are wanting and the the ability to help people and still stay connected to people and you wouldn't really be losing anything no mm, isn't that interesting it is interesting which suggests it's a kind of fear thing coming up so for someone who's used to balancing other people's energies have you <laughs> looked at your own actually lately <laughs> <laughs> but combined it with all this wonderful new information and knowledge and tools that you've acquired over the last several months to sort of use yourself as a guinea pig. How am I going to blend this? I know I can balance my energies and see what's not working. That can then bring it to your attention. So then you can use your tools to help support you through that. Yes, yes, I, I do get, I mean, I did, <laughs> I did the weekend think I need to go back to the beginning and create a, a, a plan for myself as <laughs> how I'm going to work with this because I need a bit of clarity and to kind of start getting it down. So I started to keep, re well, restarted keeping a journal as well because I thought I need right. to get this all out. Yeah, that's so helpful. So yes, I do, I need to take it. I, yes, I need. I do need to apply myself to a process, really. Mm. So it could that, be, that, Yeah, go ahead. No, I was just going to say that's a really great insight. I realised that. And you know, when you're stuck in your own head, particularly when you're at home in retreat, then it's very easy to kind of not realise that stuff because the mind starts focusing on all the fear and the worry and the what if and the I don't know if I'm ready and it's just too overwhelming and. I don't know what I'm going to do. There's too many thoughts and too many ideas and uh, it's just easier just to not. <laughs> that's not going to do it. Yeah, that's exactly what happens. It, it, it all goes, bleh, 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 bleh. okay, I just won't do anything then. Yep. So I've been baking and knitting and cleaning and tidying and walking the dog and, and Classic doing the garden. Distraction, <laughs> procrastination. Because they're much yes. easier than trying to figure it out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because I do know my, my mind isn't going to figure this out. There has to be a, you know, it's my mind is just going to keep doing this. and, and exactly. get yeah. Until you get it out of your mind, whether you verbally articulate it, whether you journal it and you acknowledge what's going on in your mind on the paper, so then you can let it sit for a day and then you can come back to it and read it with fresh perspective and, and a removed distance from it. And you can look mm. at it, remove all of the unnecessary emotional stuff and see the facts for, as for what they are. And then you can actually identify, is that fact or fear? Because sometimes the facts get polluted with fear in our mind when all we're doing is thinking about all of these negative, worrying, futurizing thoughts and it's just feeding into itself. So when we get it out of our head and we put it on paper particularly, or we talk to someone and they reframe and reflect it back to us, we can then see the difference between what our mind's been telling us and what actually are the facts, what, what actually is happening and going on so that then you have a, a greater self-awareness, which is our first thing that we do is, is create self-awareness. And then you can identify, well, what do I need to do about this? Or what am I wanting? What's missing? What am I lacking? What am I afraid of? What do I need that's not being met? And that way you can then attend to that and you can use your tools to support you forward by being proactive about it instead of being consumed by it. Yeah. Yeah, that's really helpful. 
Good. <laughs> Good. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> yes, no, that's great. Yeah. And, and I suppose it's partly I haven't really understood all, what, what the resistance is when I've been kind of doing stuff for years anyway. So it's really odd that this, this really strong resistance is up. So if you tuned into it, if you just tuned into when you think about taking action, when you think about taking that next step, when you think about, I'm going to work for myself again, not sure what it's going to look like. What comes up for you? What thoughts, what feeling in your body? What do you notice you experience when you think of taking that first step and figuring that out? Just the statement, I'm going to work for myself, but I don't know what it looks like, feels okay. But then when I kind of really think, okay, then it feels like, then fear comes up and this, well, I've got to take some sort of action. And that's when I get, uh, uh, and, and I think, oh. It's, it's, if, if yeah, do you know, it feels like fear, but I really don't understand what that is about. But it, except, I suppose there's a part of me that thinks if I'm going to do this, I really ought to do it seriously. And actually, but then you I think, why to. do I you want to do it seriously? <laughs> well, let me ask what, you this question. Do you want to have a full-time business or do you want to have a part-time business? A part-time, really, I think. Um, Okay, that's good. Can I suppose you... I would just like to feel successful in whatever I, even if it's one one client a month, I would like to feel it is successful. And I think the way I've worked, there's been successes, but there's also been kind of, oh God, this, you know, that hasn't worked. And so, do you know, and I'm not quite sure what that's about, but it feels like, um, I want a real sense of knowing what I'm doing is valuable and works. And that's come up a couple of times, purpose, value. So is it, is it not so much that the fear is taking it seriously or taking the action? Is it more about whatever action you take, whether it's one client a month or whether it's a couple, because success means different things to different people. So you might need to actually have a have a, a think about what does success mean to you now? Because it probably means something different to the success or whatever version of it you've had in the past. So yeah. clarifying what does success mean to you now and whether that's one month or something, it sounds like it very much needs to be for you to make it worthwhile. It needs to still have a purpose to provide value mm. yes and I think maybe that's what actually um, prompted me to do this in the first place was the sense of this this hasn't got value enough and purpose because because it's not taking people through the what they really need so I've, is that the case so yeah you mean? Yes, yeah, because even though we recommend three sessions, people, pe people have one session, feel great afterwards and think, yeah, and Quit then they think, oh, this <laughs> then I don't they, have to do anything they, now. <laughs> yeah, and then it shows up again and they, you know. Come back and, yeah. Yeah. So in, in a way, I think that's that sense of um, value and and it didn't have it and then maybe that's why at the beginning of this year I just thought you know what I just can't do this anymore I want something that really does <laughs> do you know and that's the value and that's the purpose really of really helping somebody and I suppose it's also a bit of a fear of well will people buy into that and commit to actually because it is expensive you know, a, a re to really change and really work through your stuff. It's an expensive process. Hmm. So what are you concerned about 
not finding clients or falling back into the trap or not the trap, but falling back into the past experience of just doing it to make money and not feeling like you're actually helping people. It doesn't sound like you're going to do something like that though, because you, you already made that decision in your mind at the beginning of the year. I don't want to do this anymore. And I've got to say, Julie, it takes a lot of guts to close a business down and take a break just because you're not feeling it anymore. Not, not everyone would, you know, that's a, that's a ballsy thing to do. If this, pardon my, you know, phrase of it, but it is a ballsy things to thing to do. And that's, that's showing me that you have integrity. That's important to me. It is one of my um, values, top values, integrity. And, and it is important to me to be true to myself. And so, yeah, and I can be ballsy at times and I can, I, I can be quite, and I think that, I think that's it actually. I just don't want to experience that anymore. I just don't want to do that. And so I suppose there's this fear that I could, I can recreate something, put it out there, but I want it to feel of value and be valued. And, um, um, I don't, it's not so much, um, lots of people. I'm not bothered about that. that I used to be for me. It's about, yeah, I want it to be, yeah, purposeful and useful and valuable and actually help. And I want to feel that as well as the, the client. So I don't, I just, and I think that's maybe the fear that what if I put all this out there and then it's, because until you start working, it's quite difficult. Trying to do the 12 week plan of how you're going to structure a coaching thing is very difficult because you have no idea what's going to go up, come up, what's going to need to go into what place. Absolutely. So until... yes, but you know why? Until... I, I totally understand that because every single client is different. But the reason that that's in the course is to get you to think about a structure. It's to get you to think about all of the tools and strategies that you've learned and which ones would be applicable in some kind of logical step, taking your clients from how they are in the beginning when they meet you and how you want to attract them with your message of this is what I know I can do to help you to the point of they have achieved what they wanted and you have taken them to a place that they no longer need you because your job is done. So unless you really are stretched and challenged to think about how would I go about that? What might that look like? Then it's not, it's, it's going to be so much harder in, in practice when you're working with clients. But the thing is, you may never use that 12 week program at all. No, but it doesn't. You'll, but you'll be working with a client with the idea of what you can do and how to be flexible and adaptable and meet them where they're at and be ready with what you could bring in at any moment that it seems like that's necessary in order to help that client feel how they need to feel, learn what they need to learn, experience what they need to experience, clarify what they need to clarify and so on. But unless you've been stretched to try and think about that 12 week program, it's going to be harder in practice. So that, that's why I get you to do it, even though you might not use it because in practice, you're going to have at least some idea of what it could look like and you may you may completely deviate from something and not use it and that's okay because this is why i suggest not trying to over plan before you see a client because if you try and plan the session out you're planning it for yourself not for them because when they come and something's happened and they really need to offload and then calm down and have your input to help them reframe that and feel better about it before they leave your session then you're going to have to abandon everything that you prepared for it anyway and still think off the top of your feet and at the top of the head and actually be there and focused on the client so there's no point trying to over prep that's why that 12-week program is simply an outline of what you might do because it might actually come in handy if you're doing a two-day workshop or a four-day retreat that is structured and needs to take people through a journey of experiencing. And it might actually also double as a group program or an online course. So it's important to do that 12 week program as challenging as it is, because you're not really quite sure yet, not working with people, but it serves a purpose. 
and it does make that process easier. But always meet your client where they're at. Yeah. So back to you in working with clients, you said earlier, even if I just success, even if I just have one client a, a, a month. So before when you were talking about integrity and having a purpose and actually truly helping people and not wanting to repeat the past experience of being in business for so long, just doing that and then coming to the end of feeling not aligned with it anymore and wanting to stop to the point where you actually did stop. Mm. What do you think the percentage risk is of you repeating something that you've already done and you've decided for yourself, I don't want to do that anymore? Zero. <laughs> Pretty low anyway. Yeah. So do you think you're going to let that happen again if you did start a new business, you did it on your terms and you only, even if you only saw one person a month and they got change from it, that was a success. Do you think you would repeat the past? No, no, no. So basically the future was, is within your hands. You get to choose, you get to decide. Maybe when you started your business many years ago, you, you, I mean, obviously when you started your business years ago, it was something that you wanted to do and you wanted to help people with and it aligned with you and it made sense. And that's, that's what you wanted to do and how you wanted to help people. It's perfectly natural and human to over the years of helping people in one particular way, get bored with it, get disillusioned by it, not feel it anymore kind of feel like, oh, I've had enough. I've been doing the same thing over and over. I just want to change. I want some excitement. I want to learn something new. I want to do something that actually matters and means more to me, that really inspires people more. It's totally natural to go through that experience after so many years and feel differently about it, that you don't want to do it anymore. And you're not doing it anymore. You made that decision and you stopped and you changed it. And then you focused forward looked at what else could I do, you did this course, now you've learned a completely new way to work with people. And you've just said chances of you repeating the past are zero. So now what do you have to lose if you started again on your terms as slowly as you wanted to? Mm. Nothing really. It would be nice to have a bit of direction again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, yes, that's, yeah. Mm. So when you think of that now, Julie, what's coming up within your mind or body now? It definitely all feels a lot clearer. There's less charge around it all. And yeah, it's really, it's really freeing to think, actually, I don't have to work this out now, how this, it just is what it is. And it's okay, yeah, no, if it's feeling okay. Because I don't actually have to have any expectation of this at all. All I have to do is just put forward what I do and that's it. Yeah, trust that it resonates with the people who recognise that's beneficial and valuable to them. Yeah. Even if that's only one person a month or if after a couple of months that turns into word of mouth and five people per month, you're still staying true to yourself with integrity, helping people with real value. I think that's the important bit, being true to myself. Who else would you be true to? Well, yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but it's easy, it's easy to kind of lose sight of things sometimes when you're on a bit of a... Hiatus. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And, and that's normal and human as well. We get so, so um, hard on ourselves with expectation 
because we think we should be further along than we are. But the thought of trying to figure it all out to be where we think we should be is exhausting and overwhelming and stresses us out. It's just much easier just to stay here and go bake something. Yeah. Don't even worry about it. Just go plant something in the garden. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that yeah, that's really helpful. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah, that's re that really is. Yes. Your question about what I lose and what I gain is, was such a big insight that it somehow it just feels actually, look, it, it'll unfold, it's all right. Yeah. So when you take that pressure off, then it feels a little bit more comfortable, like you've got some room to move and there's no rush, there's no hurry, particularly because there really isn't for you at the moment, is there? You're not no. needing to, to hurry and rush this and push this you're actually in a position where you can just take your time because you want it to really mean something. You want it to have value and you want to have integrity and stay true to yourself about how that looks and feels to you in business because you don't want to go back to the past and you don't want to feel like you, were, like you ended up feeling at the beginning of this year when you just quit everything. And it's quite hard for me at the moment. I mean, when I read what I've written in that, in my workbook i think oh this is very good <laughs> and yeah i was just going to say it's it's hard to actually express what has meaning to me but actually i think maybe that's not true maybe it's more about what's just being true to what has meaning yeah what feels truer now because you what you did that workbook a, a few weeks ago or even longer than that so what feels truer now? What's a, what's a more truer? Because we're going to use this word truer. Because you said you want to stay true to yourself. So what feels true for you now? Because it's okay to change your mind in a few weeks. You can change your mind tomorrow. You can change your mind later today. That's okay. As long as you're staying true to yourself, Julie. Yes. Well, I think, do you know what, what, what I wrote in the workbook? Because I revisited it at the weekend thinking... And when I was reading it, I thought well, that is the true expression, this sense of weaving ancient and modern stuff together and da 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 da. That felt very true. What about now? That still feels kind of true somehow. It... And I think, I think that's... I think when I filled in the workbook, I wasn't clear about who my client group is because I, I kind of think, well, who is my client group? It could be anyone. Um, which I suppose kind of slightly makes it less, this is, this is my focus. It makes it more a bit like that. And I think I'm rambling a little bit now. <laughs> it could be anyone, but it's more likely to be a certain type of person. Yeah. Yes, and I think I think that's true for me is what I wrote, but there is a very big spiritual aspect to it and spiritual sort of um path in it as well, which So I I think I think to be true to me, it's about expressing this really who, who I am and, um, and being with that rather than trying to be everything to all people. Which you, it's, it's very hard to try and be everything to everyone. Yeah, I did notice that when I closed my business, I was part the, when I looked at my website, I thought, oh gosh, do I save any of this that I've written? And I looked at it and thought, no, I'm not saving it. It can all go. Something new has to come in. And I thought, I've in a way, I've, I've tried to market to anybody and everybody. But I think my, I think what I work with are people with emotional issues, actually, or spiritual, or, or kind of just who want to explore their a, a bigger purpose. That's, that's kind of where I, it tends to be what I attract. 
And your domain that you secured was in spirit, spirit, of, spirit of change, which really aligns what, with what you just said. And I think that's I was, because it's meaningful to you. I mean, why be in business if, if what you're doing isn't meaningful? Yeah, exactly. I'm not sure I actually want to do kinesiology anymore, actually. So this is it. I do definitely want to stick with the shamanic work and I like the life coaching and everything that brings. So really, I'm not sure that kinesiology is going to go forward. It may or it may not. So I'm not going to put pressure on myself about that. But to be true to me, I think it's much more the shamanic path, really, weaved in with it. So... What do you think of the sound of spiritual coaching or holistic spiritual coaching? I don't know if that's necessary to join the two. What does that sound like to include the shamanic work if you want to, but to definitely still be coaching people and working with them in that new way that feels more aligned to where you are now? I think I did because I've looked at all the different titles that coaches use because I thought I don't know what to call what sort of coach to call myself and um, I looked at that and I thought I wasn't sure what I would expect from a spiritual coach so I thought I, it what didn't feel like it clarified anything for me if that makes sense mm -hmm. but it's it is in there so like spiritual life coach spiritual coach for your life purpose yes it's it kind of feels like it needs to be in there somewhere what did i what, there was another one that i did think it showed up but i thought oh um was it in your workbook no, I did think instead of just saying mind, body, soul coach or something like that. But then I thought that might be covering everything again. Um, Spiritual soul coach. That's a, you can make that a thing. Yeah. If you had to, think, sorry. No, go on. If you had to say, I'm a spiritual life coach, helping you find your, what would you say? Path forward, way forward. Um, so something to do with direction, purpose, meaning. Do you want to help your clients find meaning in their lives? Change direction. <laughs> Yeah, meaning, I think, and... Um, life meaning? Life purpose? What kind of meaning? Um, I think personal meaning, life meaning. Because um, meaning is different for all of us, isn't it? But it's... Um, it's almost like a spiritual life coach helping you bring more meaning into your life. Yes. Yeah. Because I, I did think personal development, which in a way it is, mm -hmm. but that, that, that feels too clinical somehow. Yeah. Whereas it's sort of the opposite of spiritual, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to blame. Um, yeah. But yeah, spiritual helping you bring meaning. Yeah. There's a lot to play with, isn't there? Because actually there's so many things that you can add to this. <laughs> and, and that's really part of narrowing it down. Because yes, you could market to everybody and then they might be confused about whether you're the right person for them. Or you can market to those who you know you can help, who are looking for life direction, 
who are looking for a little bit more spirituality, who are looking for more meaning. And maybe they've been through a life transition. Maybe they've been through a, a chronic health condition or a family member's passing. Maybe they've lost their job and they're lacking that sense of purpose, meaning and direction in their lives. And they need help trying to figure it out. Is that the kind of client that you want to work with? Yes. And I think it's also, it's something to do with, you know, there is another way we've lost connection with ourselves and with nature and all those other things. So, so it is that kind of sense of self, as well that self-ownership I really like that <laughs> right um, I think a lot of people are lost and looking for um, meaning in the wrong places and then falling short really you know in, in the big job or the or the all the other things that people somehow think is important and then when they feel like life just is you know that kind of dissatisfaction or, or unhappiness or lacking purpose it's it's something around that as well so it is about It's like, I think it is about finding yourself, knowing yourself, having more sense of um, your own part in creating. So almost like a spiritual life coach who helps the lost find themselves again. Yes, <laughs> lost souls. <laughs> yeah, that's it, it, it is that. So what if you, what if you used, if you, if you feel like spiritual life coach is kind of encompassing how you see yourself working with people, blending the coaching with the shamanism, if you wanted to energy, if you wanted to, but encapsulating that in that title, but expanding it somewhat with your little tagline, that's where a tagline can really help differentiate you from other spiritual coaches or life coaches or holistic life coaches because the tagline gives your potential clients a sense of how you may help them and what what they may be looking for that they find in your tagline that speaks to them what is mm. that what does that feel like or or what does that resonate like for you thinking about okay what if i was a spiritual life coach helping people find themselves helping the lost and the helping lost and broken find themselves helping helping you find your way you know just play with it yeah yeah i like that yeah When you can get your tagline down, Julie, that tagline is a reminder for you. These, these are the people I help. Yeah. Or this is what I do. So it doesn't always necessarily need to sort of be a phrase of this is, this is who I help. Sometimes it's this is how I help you. Yes. Because the people who resonate with it will get it. They'll know either that's me or that's what I need. Yes, and that, that's it, I think. that Yeah, you've not hit the nail on the head. That's really got to reflect me and my value and what I am not, what I think everybody out there is wanting. It's got to be what I'm offering and what I am. Because you are choosing to stay true to myself. Yes. <laughs> You just keep coming yeah. back to that. Every decision you make in business, even before you reform your business, start seeing anyone, 
have it all figured out because you don't need to to get started. You can just get started and figure it out as you go. Keep that in mind and keep coming back to that. Every decision you make, does it align with who I am and how I want to help people? Does what I'm about to do in business or how I want to help people, the next step I'm taking, is it staying true to me? Does it feel good? If it doesn't feel good, don't do it. Just like you know how to do. It didn't feel good to stay in business and work as a kinesiologist, so you just shut it all down. Ballsy move. How can you use that knowledge and that evidence that you can take those risks and you can do what's necessary when it doesn't serve you anymore to stay focused on what is true to you in every decision you make moving forward? Yeah. Then you don't have to get stuck in the worry of what if I, what if it turns out like it did last time? What if that happens? What if that happens? It won't matter because you'll be focusing forward, making sure every decision that you make, every next step forward in your new business is being shaped by your integrity, by needing to have meaning because that's why you want to be in business and staying mm. true to you. So when you think of taking the next steps forward and actually taking that first step and getting back out there on your own terms in your own time, what is that experience of that thought feel like now in your body or what thoughts come up about that? Does that feel better or worse? It feels exciting. It feels exciting now. It feels more like, ah, okay, I can see the see a way now. So yeah, it feel it feels okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, it feels like ooh, light bulb moment. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes, got it. And that's what we like. We like the light bulb to go off, don't we? Internally. Yeah, <laughs> yeah got it. <laughs> awesome. Fantastic. So what do you think the, the, the first logical step would be for you? What do you feel ready to do? Even if it's a small step, it's okay. What do you think or feel is the first step for you now? I think I want to write down my kind of principles, if you like, about integrity, being true to me and so on and so on. I want to right. write that down so it's visual. That's a great idea. And and a reminder and then I think what I want what I what I'm going to allow to just kind of stalk me and show up because that's how these things work is my tagline because it feels to me that if I get that then everything else will kind of just fall into place around it if I if I get the this is me yeah bit everything I think will just become clearer or well, at least that's the next step. <laughs> yeah. Like what, when you were saying that, what came up in my mind was living an authentic or living a life of meaning through authenticity or living a meaningful life through authenticity. I'm trying to find something that rolls off the tongue. It is, isn't it? It's authenticity. It's that kind of heart, heart, living from the heart, really, knowing your own truth. And that's what life coaching kind of does, isn't it? It helps you understand your own truth heartfelt coaching to find your truth yes that's good isn't it that just so good, good. taglines <laughs> do you want to write that down <laughs> i do want to write that down i have got pen and paper next to me yeah heartfelt coaching to find your truth does that resonate does that feel good it makes me feel good <laughs> i quite like it myself <laughs> Heartfelt no, to find your truth. That's good, isn't it? It's bloody good. <laughs> <laughs> well done. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so I've got what I've called, and I've got my tagline, and I've got my values and my things. So, yeah, that's all I need, really. Oh, well, my work's done. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm wary of time, because I think 
is this half an hour? We, we've had more than half an hour, I think, haven't we? Okay, oh. we are, we're just on an hour. And ah. you're <laughs> so I'm happy to do that because you needed this. And you know what, Julie? If you're okay with this, I would love to have your permission to actually use this hour conversation. I might just chop out a bit at the beginning, but use this as a demonstration of life coaching to help people get unstuck with something that's holding them back. How do you, how do you feel about that? Is that okay with you? Yes, I guess. I mean, it's made sense, hasn't it? It might help people. <laughs> you tell me, has it made sense? <laughs> it's made sense. <laughs> Yes, no, it's been really helpful. Yeah, I, I feel clearer than I've felt for weeks. So um... Amazing what happens when we just get out of our own head. Yeah. No, the value of coaching, actually, because um, I'd never had any experience before I did the course, and I don't know what called me to the course. It was just, I procrastinated for a year, but I kept thinking, I really need to do it, you know. But the value of coaching is is really amazing i can't i can't express it i can't even explain to others how valuable you know good life coaching session is well hopefully now you've had a good experience of it yes thank you very much you're welcome you've been really helpful i feel so much clearer yeah yeah that's so great. I can see your face is just more relaxed and, and, and happier than, you know, you were when you were talking about it in the beginning. It was a little bit more yeah. <laughs> antsy. Yeah, and no, that feels great. Yeah, so no, that's fine. That's fine if it's, if it's uh, um, worthwhile to show students. <laughs> I think it would be most instructive of what can happen within a holistic life coaching session. Because yes, we have a structure and a methodology of what we, we kind of want to stick to. But at the same time, I'm always saying meet, meet people where they're at and find your own unique way of applying and implementing the strategies and the tools to get that result for your clients. And, and that comes over time. I've been doing this a long time now. So I do take a few liberties here and there and I do have my own unique way of get into things and I can see things much quicker than I used to when I first started out. But at the same time, it's not helpful if I tell you, I have mm. to be very observant and pick up what you're saying and what you're not saying so that I can reflect them to you or I can ask you a question in a particular way that will help draw out what you hadn't been able to see before, but was just what you needed to see. Mm. So I think it will be very instructive for a lot of a lot of the students to get a sense of what's possible and how it can how it can be done, and and what the, yeah. benefit, the value is for you. Yeah, no, that has been really helpful. I feel really clearer, and yeah, well, I feel I feel much better. Excellent, that's great. Thank you, thank you. You're very welcome. <laughs> My pleasure.